Hello everyone, and welcome to another Vinriki video. And in this video, we're gonna be going over something I really didn't think I would make, which is kind of a fire mage guide. Now it's not that in depth of a guide, but I just wanted to talk about the spec overall in Wrath of the Lich King, because when I played Wrath of the Lich King back in the day, this is not a spec that really anybody played. I mean, maybe uh, once in a while, but in tournaments, nobody played. At the highest ratings, nobody played Fire Mage whatsoever. And it turns out that it's actually a pretty good spec and a really fun spec if you gear properly and you have kind of the right play style for it. So I just want to talk about the things that I like about it and maybe some of the struggles uh, you might have on Fire. But uh, one of the things about Fire Mage that is really, really fun is you are basically a caster bruiser in a, a lot of ways. So what you're going to be doing is pushing in a lot. So you get in people's faces, use your Dragon's Breath, use your Blast Wave um, to really disrupt the team. You can knock them off the edge of Z-axis maps like Blade's Edge, uh, like Dalaran Sewers, for example. Uh, you can push in and get big Dragon's Breath and create big plays and make setups. It's it's quite fun. And your overall damage as fire is maybe some of the highest of any spec in the entire game. I would say 90% of my games, I'm number one on damage. Um, and I think the specialization is incredibly effective, especially uh, in fives and uh, even threes have managed to do quite well. So I want to just talk about like uh, the overall play style. Um, you're mostly like a, a kind of like a dot slash burst and like a caster bruiser, like I said. So the overall play style is keeping up your living bomb on multiple targets. Pretty simple. So you're going to be doing damage to everybody uh, with your living bomb. And then, of course, you can put up your scorch, which gives you a critical strike debuff. So it uh, gives them an additional 5% chance to be critically hit. So if you really want to, you can cast that spell. But you're basically just going to be keeping up your living bombs, up your scorch when you can, fire blasting, and then when you want to get crazy, you can use your Combust, and your Combust will give you basically instant cast pyros from your Living Bombs exploding. And you can combo that with Dragon's Breath, which keeps them uh, in place. It's really, really strong. After the Dragon's Breath, you can use Instant Flame Strike, use Blast Wave to knock them around, use Instant Flame Strike, and of course, keep up your dots. Use your Impact procs to stun them. You can use your Silence on them. Um, as well as your rocket glove. So it's pretty straightforward in, in terms of the way you deal damage, but it can be really, really effective when you're getting these pyro procs. Um, you can set up on someone with like a dragon's breath, put a living bomb on them, scorch fire blast them for a stun, and then I could shoot my instant pyro proc on them. And you're just doing the most incredible damage in the game. It's really, really fun. So you're just burning everybody down. Some of the drawbacks of fire mage, I would say, is uh, your mana but I feel like I've managed to come up with a way to kind of help that, and that is through your gearing and your talents. So I, I feel like this is something maybe I didn't think of back in the day. I, I really don't call Fire Mages like nearly at all, but I do think there's talents you can use to help your longevity in the arena and actually make it so you can a lot of the times outmana your opponents, which is something I didn't really expect. So I'll quickly go over the talents that I use. Um, so you can see my Arcane Talents. We pick up Arcane Subtlety, we pick up Arcane Focus, we pick up ma Magic Absorption. And originally I thought, okay, Fire Mage, you're going to need Arcane Fortitude because you're going to be tanking a lot of damage. It turns out you're actually pretty durable. So because of talents like uh, Fiery Payback, which is one of the strongest talents in the game, in my opinion, I'll just read it out for you really quick. Uh, when you get below 35% health, you take 20% reduced damage. Uh, it also, you get like a fast cast Power Blast, which is really cool. So if you get low health, you can quickly turn the tide of the game with a really fast cast Power Blast. Um, in addition, melee and ranged attacks against you have a 10% chance to disarm your attacker. So a lot of times what happens, like a warrior's blade storming on me, he'll just get disarmed on his blade storm, 10% chance. Uh, a rogue uses shadow dance on me and I'm stuck in a kidney shot, he gets disarmed. It's quite hilarious. So you have this random disarm, you have the damage reduction below 35% health. And then in addition to that, you have blazing speed, which randomly procs another 10% chance to remove snares on you and give you a sprint so you can get away with that. And then of course you have your knock with blast wave to knock melee off of you. When melee connect to you, you can also dragon's breath them. So you just have a lot of ability to kite. And in a lot of ways, I think fire is actually more tanky than frost. Um, when it comes to 3v3 and 5v5, if you're the main target in the match, of course, ice bear is very strong, but I think you're just a, your ability to mitigate damage and get away is really high as fire. So. What I decided to do is drop the Arcane Fortitude, 
and pick up five in Arcane Concentration for clear casting. I thought having more mana matters way more than the 4% damage on some spells with Spell Impact and the Arcane Fortitude Armor. So you have no mana, you can't play the game. And clear casting is very strong. Living Bomb, actually every tick of Living Bomb has a chance to uh, proc clear casting, which is really, really solid. Um, and then of course, when you get that clear casting, you can put up a fresh Living Bomb or use some of your more expensive AOE spells without really any kind of concern whatsoever. I got Magic Attunement for the range on Counterspell and Polymorph. Focus Magic, which is really, really important, especially if you're playing Spell Cleaves, which uh, I mostly do. So I mostly play like Elemental Shaman, Fire Mage. Uh, I really want to play um, Affliction Warlock, Fire Mage, or Destro Warlock, Fire Mage, I think, or Boomkin, Fire Mage. All of these are really, really strong and you're gonna to wanna to put that on your, your caster DPS to give yourself a little bit more crit and then uh, improve counterspell. For fire talents, it's gonna look a little bit weird, but um, I, I, this is the best I've been able to come up with. There's only one thing I might change here, and I'll tell you what that is. So, we got improved fire blast, we got improved incinerate, and you might be wondering, why don't you have fireball? You don't use fireball, okay? So, if you ever have to hard cast a spell, I actually think frost firebolt um, is better. Um, than using Fireball. It's a shorter cast time. You still benefit from a lot of talents. There's a lot of reasons why it's good. But that being said, I, I almost never, ever, ever use Fireball or Frost Firebolt. The only time I would consider using it is if I can just absolutely free cast and I want single target damage, but even then I normally Scorch. Um, but if you're in a 1v1, if you're in a 1v1 and you want to get the most possible burst outcome, what you can do is like a Dragon's Breath, and then from there, you can cast your, your Frost Firebolt, okay? So that's the only time I really use that is in a, like a 1v1 situation like that. So no improved Fireball, um, and you're mostly just gonna rely on your Scorch, and if you absolutely have to, a Frost Firebolt. So we got Ignite, maxed out, uh, World in Flames. Originally, I thought Burning Determination, really good talent, still could have uses, but I find I don't really cast much. Because I don't cast much, I don't really care about this interrupt mechanic, like the immunity interrupt mechanic, because I'm not really casting spells. I mean, most of my damage is just coming from Living Bomb, from Fire Blast, from my instant cast Pyro Blast when they proc, from Dragon's Breath, Flame Strike, from more Pyro Blast, from more Living Bombs, more Blast Waves, to more Flame Strikes. So I, I'm not casting that much in Arena. And because of that, I don't really care about Burning Determination. And you'll find in the Fire Tree, there's so many important talents that you just can't get. So something has to give. So next up, get Flame Throwing for the range, Impact. I only get two in this. I find even with just two in Impact, I'm still getting the proc very often um, because with Molten Shields, your Molten Armor has a chance to proc it. So only two in Impact. Power Blast, no Burning Soul because you're not casting. Two and improved Scorch, good enough for me. 66% chance to put up the debuff. Happens more often than not. Sometimes you have to cast two Scorches, big deal. One in a million, you have to cast three. Molten Shields uh, gives you a chance to reflect Frost and Fire spells um, with your, your wards, the Casino wards, but also it makes it so your Molten Armor works against ranged and spell attacks, which is really strong. So you can like disarm Hunters while they're attacking you and also they get Thorns damage uh, when they attack you with your Molten Armor. Uh, Master of Elements, really, really important for mana return. Um, when your spell's critical strike, you get a portion of that mana refunded to you. It's actually really important for your longevity. And I'm thinking about actually picking up a third point in Master of Elements. If you have mana issues, what I would do is I'd get a third point in Master of Elements and drop one in Firepower. You already do the most damage ever. So it's not that big of a deal to drop one in Firepower and uh, pick up more mana regeneration because if you don't have mana, you can't do damage, turns out. And that's one of the things fire mages do struggle with. So um, anyways, as we continue, critical mass three, blast wave, blazing speed, firepower. Um, I have three here, but I'm considering, like I said, dropping one here for another rank in master of elements. Pyromaniac, really, really strong, increases your crit chance and allows you to actually regen while in combat, which is also really, really good. Combustion, um, I don't get the, Molten Fury, which is a good talent, but I don't think you can afford to pick it up. We got Fiery Payback, Empowered Fire, 2 out of 2 Fire Starter. Now, funny story about Fire Starter. When I was playing Fire in the pre-patch and I was playing with this talent, people are coming to my stream and telling me that it wasn't a good talent. Like, they're like, oh yeah, the private servers, nobody uses this talent, it's not good, blah, blah. I was like, what? How? It's so great. Fire Starter is, in my opinion, one of the things that actually makes Fire Mage viable, so... Anytime you Blast Wave or anytime you Dragon's Breath, you get a free Flame Strike that costs no mana. So it's just free damage. Look at this. Dragon's Breath, I get a free Flame Strike. Instant Cast. 
And you put that on their whole team. It also puts a burn on the ground, okay? They use Blast Wave. I get a free Flame Strike. And that damage adds up to be quite a lot. So definitely an insane talent. Don't recommend you skip that one. Uh, hot Streak, 3 out of 3. Burnout, 5 out of 5. And Living Bomb. So no Frost Talents. And we got 54 Fire. And we have 17 Arcane. So those are the talents. In terms of the glyphs that I've been using, I have Living Bomb, Polymorph, and Evocation. There are some other glyphs that are really strong. So one of the other glyphs that is really strong is the Molten Armor Glyph. And what that does is it actually converts more of your Spirit rating into Critical Strike rating. So right now at a base, it's only 35% of your Spirit into Crit. Um, but with the Glyph, it's 55% of your Spirit. So really, really strong. Um, and I'm, I'm debating once I get more Spirit, because right now I don't have that much Spirit. Um, but once I get more Spirit, um, I, I think I'm going to drop Polymorph Glyph for the Molten Shields Glyph or the Molten Armor Glyph to give myself even more crit because the spec is all about crit, right? When you crit, you get your instant pyros. When you crit, you get refunded mana on Master of Elements. Crit is just king when it comes to Fire Mage. So that's why I think Fire is only going to get better. This is like the worst Fire is going to be because you have the least amount of access to uh, crit. Um, so kind of excited for that. Those are the Glyphs that I use. Um, and then uh, for Miners, I use Fire, Frost Ward, and Slowfall. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about was uh, gearing. So I did make a BIS list and we could put this um, in the video. Um, it's right here. So this is the BIS list that I came up with after careful consideration and consulting other fire mages. I realized um, on fire, I don't really care about polymorph cast time and I don't really care about like the four set in general for PVP. So what I decided to do is just go over the, go after the highest item level pieces um, that are gonna give me more spirit, which means more crit and more crit, which means more crit, go figure, and more spell power. So the Hood of Rationality, uh, Mantle of Dissemination, and the Leggings of Mortal Arrogance are actually, it's kind of nice because not a lot of casters actually need these, but these are all 226 item level and they're all, um, all of them have uh, stamina, int, spirit, crit, and spell power. So that's what you want as a fire mage. They're very, very high spirit. And once I get all these pieces, that is when I'm gonna switch over to the Molten Armor Glyph um, and give myself even more crit rating. So with this BIS list, yeah, I got the Hood of Rationality, Mantle of Dissemination, and you can go through it if you want. Bindings of the Expansive Mind for more crit and hit. Turning Tide, obviously. Um, this trinket right here is something that I've been using that's really strong. Um, Dark Moon uh, Card Berserker it basically has like 100% uptime in Arena. So it's basically just a stat stick that gives you 100 Brazil and 3% crit. Very strong. And it allows you to uh, actually use a lot more PvE gear, which I think at this point is very important for uh, Fire Mage. But you can see I got my hit cap, I got my spell pen cap. Uh, my haste is incredibly low, which is sad, but my crit is through the roof. And uh, with Molten Armor, that crit will be even higher, probably upwards of 30% crit self buffed, I would say, maybe even more. Yeah, 30% base crits, uh, I think, is very, very possible uh, with Molten Armor. So. Really, really strong, and my resilience isn't too bad. If you think the resilience is a little bit low, you can always take off one of these pieces and put on uh, more more resil as you see fit, right? Um, but I, th I think in general, that's like a pretty good starting point and what I plan on doing. So we put this in um, in the, the description of the video for you guys. And then lastly, there's not really any macros specific to Fire Mage that I, I really wanna share with you guys. Uh, there's only one that I find to be useful that uh, I'll share, and it's this one. There are other macros that I use, like the regular, like, oh, focus spell steal and focus polymorph and focus counter spell. But in terms of fire specific macros that you might not have seen before, the only thing I use is a cast sequence macro for flame strike. So when I use my flame strike, as you can see, basically what happens is it will put a flame strike down, and when it goes off, it switches it to rank eight for four seconds. And that way I could put a, a rank eight flame strike down. Now, the reason why you do that is the flame patches on the ground actually stack. So when people are stacked up and you're doing your dragon's breath, flame strike, blast wave, flame strike, you're gonna get more burn damage from having a rank nine and a rank eight, as you can see them both ticking out. It's a lot of uh, just damage, especially if people are like lumped up on a pillar, it's just gonna give you a more AOE damage essentially. So. That's the only macro uh, that I use, and I'll make sure to put this in the description of the video as well. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to see more Fire Mage, definitely uh, you know follow the channel, um, hit the hit the ring the bell, you know follow because I plan on playing it. I think more people are going to start playing Fire Mage because it is really fun. And in this particular meta, I, I you know it's funny because 
in this particular meta, uh, with how Frost Mage is, I love Frost Mage. It's really cool to have you, you know, deep freeze and silence, and you have a lot of control. But I realized the more I play, there's some annoying matchups. There's a lot, and there's a lot of people playing like kind of flavor of the month, best stuff in Wrath. Things like Elemental Shaman, Paladin, uh, Warlock, Destro Ellie Paladin, or Paladin uh, Ellie uh, Warrior. Like these comps are, they're very annoying to fight as Frost. Your Water Elemental just dies really fast. Sacred Cleansing causes your most important spells to miss, like Deep Freeze, which you can still win. I'm not saying Frost is bad. It obviously isn't. It's the best spec, but I think Fire can be a lot of fun. So instead of like trying to like finesse and find these setups and struggle to get CC and getting wind sheared every five seconds and grounded and knocked and dead. You just put Living Bomb up and kill their whole team. Pretty fun. So <laughs> check it out if you want. Um, I've decided to basically fully gear for fire. Um, I'm ready to go. The professions I'm using, uh, that's another thing we can talk about is just um, dual crafting for more crit and then engineering uh, for the rocket glove. And I don't think that I'm going to be switching to... I think I'm going to keep the hand-mounted Pyro Rocket for at least this entire season, maybe the next season. I don't know where we really go from here, but um, the haste proc does not seem very good for fire, so probably won't end up using it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any more questions, uh, let me know. It's it's pretty straightforward. And like I said, I'm going to be putting videos, so if you guys want to see like exactly how I play it, uh, just check out the videos, and you can come to my stream, ask me questions, uh, all that good stuff. But yeah, definitely uh, surprised with how much I like this spec and how viable I really think it is. So if you want to make the switch, do it up. All right, later guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.